There's something about watching industrial processes that scratches an itch you didn't even know you had. But there are some processes you wouldn't believe that make things you never even thought about in the most visually rewarding of ways. So without further ado, here are some satisfying, clever industrial processes you never considered. Amazing. Sonovo Egg Peeler Eggs, nature's pre-packed snack. Have you ever wondered how boiled eggs are made and shelled in bulk? Take a look at this incredibly satisfying video of the Sonovo Egg Peeling System 20,000. First, eggs are centered on stainless steel rollers before being transferred to a boiling conveyor belt. After 18 minutes in their scalding hot bath, the eggs are dropped into an ice cold cooling tank for 23 minutes. The eggs are then peeled in a unique high yield system which shakes and cracks the shell before being moved into a buffer machine which hammers and buffs the shells away. This machine can boil, cool, and peel 20,000 eggs an hour. This is exactly what I needed. Pavan Manufacturing Line Italian company Pavan unveiled their fully automated fresh-filled pasta manufacturing line in 2017 and accidentally created one of the most hypnotizing processes in the food market. Once the dough is mixed, rolled, and folded with filling, the forming process begins with the MRD 540. This means pasta such as ravioli, fagatini, and capolatelli is folded perfectly at the base from the machines hypnotically in sync, an incredibly fast set of nine clamps. When formed, the pasta is then transferred to a thermal treatment system where it is pasteurized and dried. In their three lines, Pavan can produce up to 150 tons of single-sheet fresh-filled pasta a day. That's almost 1,000 kilograms an hour. This proves that anything is possible. Dilmet Galvanized Chain Link Fence Chain link fences may not seem that exciting out in the real world, but watching them being made is utterly spellbinding. This video from Dilamet Lucas Borowais shows an automated chain link mesh machine churning out a huge 180 meters squared of mesh per hour. The process works as a pre-coiled set of helix wires is fed into tube connecting to the existing fence. Once fed to the end, the wires are quickly cut and rolled to feed in the next helix. The loose wires are then twisted together by a powerful turning mechanism on each end to prevent the mesh coming apart. Satisfaction guaranteed. Ipeka Loaf Master. The average American eats 53 pounds of bread a year, but it's not all packed and sliced by hand, obviously. The Ipeka Loaf Master takes care of that for us. This machine has the capacity to bag up to 50 loaves a minute and utilizes a unique airflow design that prevents the bread slices from separating. A servo drive is then used to push the loaves forward at an optimal speed to hit the end of the open bag but with just enough force not to rupture it. Once inside, the hydraulic system at the end of the line centers the end of the bags and folds a metal clip around it to prevent the product from becoming stale. So simple, yet so satisfying. Crayola Crayons Crayola crayons are undeniably iconic, but how much do you know about how they're made? Let's take a look at one of the manufacturing plants in Easton, Pennsylvania. The process begins with a secret mix of paraffin wax, pigments, and other ingredients. Once melted together, the mixture is then pumped into a rotary mold. Then the hardened top layer of the mold is scraped away to give the crayon a smooth end. Crayons are removed from the mold using a hydraulic pressure system and a moving arm takes the crayons over to a labeling operation. They're wrapped twice so that they're stronger than any other crayon. In one minute, the factory can mold and label 8,500 crayons. That's 13.5 million crayons per day and about 3 billion a year. For perspective, that's enough to loop around the world six times. Now that it's Crayola. Glass Bottles There's something about superheated industrial processes that takes satisfaction to another level. So let's take a look at this brilliant bottle forming and testing process footage from New Age Media. Generally, a mixture of silica, soda ash, limestone, and cullet is superheated in furnaces, giving it a liquid form before being cut and molded into a desired shape. Here we see the molten glass globs are being cut with extreme precision before dropping into a forming machine which fires them into their delegated forming press. Compressed air is then used to create the neck and basic bottle shape. A hugely important factor is the neck of a bottle prevents heat diffusion from a consumer's hand leaching into the bottle at the same rate a straight vertical design would, keeping your beverage cooler for longer. The parison is then flipped 180 degrees, reheated, and compressed air is used again to blow the bottle into its final desired shape. 
These are then processed for sterilization, polishing, and packaging. This is like the world's most satisfyingly fragile conga line. Steel nails. All the processes so far are for relatively complex products. So how about we look at something simple and satisfying, like a steel nail. Using a large spool, a large coil of steel wire is fed into the nail machine where it is straightened and pushed forward. A hydraulic hammer then applies enough pressure to spread the end of the wire into a small head. When the wire is pushed again, it follows the hammer back and is cut, giving it a point at the opposing end. This machine can produce up to 25,800 nails per hour. Now that's what I call nailing it. Viscon Hydroponics Now here's a process that you wouldn't suspect could be automated, let alone satisfying to watch. Viscon Hydroponics a closed growing system for food that is run across pools of deep water which reduces the manual labor component of some crop farming. Plant pots are seeded and grown before being automatically transplanted by a series of giant conveyor belts and arms to large hydro pools. The jets provide systematic watering so the crop is uniform from day one. The trays the plants sit in rotate around the pools and at the end of their growing cycle are removed from the water and harvested by a hydraulic system. This then cuts the roots from the bottom of the pot and has the product consumer ready. Green never looked so good. Plywood Production Plywood is made up of multiple sheets of wood glued together to make an incredibly versatile product. But how on earth do you get sheets of wood? Well, look no further than this footage from Woodard Presents. Once felled, a tree is cut into large sections and debarked. Then the real fun begins. Using a 12-foot veneer knife, the giant wooden cylinder is compressed with a nose bar and a knife cuts into the log while it's rotated at speed, creating gigantic reams of wooden veneer three millimeters thick. The veneer is rolled up and moved to another area where it is cut to size and multiple veneer sheets are then stacked and glued together before being compressed to create a lightweight yet hardy panel of plywood. If I could watch this process forever, I would. Finnis Onion Orientation System. Now here's a process guaranteed to make you cry. With joy, the Finnis Onion Processing and Peeling Machine is satisfaction incarnate. Not only because everything is perfectly timed once placed on the automatic feeding belt, but because it all hinges on the company's unique automatic onion orientation system, which you can see in action here. It relies on a camera installed above the onion which locates one of the onion ends. It then directs a series of three rotors to turn the onion until it's facing the right direction. Once this is complete, the onions are fed into the next stage where they're notched, topped and tailed and finally peeled with an air blowing system. With a manual component at the end, this machine can process 12,000 onions per hour. Damn, that's a lot. Fritsch Multi-Twist Germany is known for its efficiency, so it's no surprise they've made one of the most productive and gratifying bakery machines on the planet. The Fritsch Multi-Twist produces dough in strands, which are then stretched into a U-shape. They're adjusted to be even on both sides via a conveyor belt system before being twisted into that perfect pretzel shape by a robotic arm. The arm works so fast, it's able to twist almost 2,000 pretzels per hour. And that's not all. The arm has seven different functionalities, so it can create a multitude of deliciously twisted bread-based products effortlessly. That really puts the dough in productive. OHA Chain Bending Machine If you like a good, clean, straightforward process, then this is the video for you. Take a look at the OHA Group CBM12, which stands for Chain Bending Machine 12mm. Feeding in a 6 to 12 millimeter diameter wire, the machine first indents the wire and moves it on to a series of piston driven shunts. The pressure from the shunts causes the indent to break and form a new bend of the chain, while additional shunts bend in the ends. Pincer mechanism moves the complete link out of the way and reinserts it once a new link is being made. The chain then feeds into two presses which seal each alternating link. Outputting between 25 to 35 links a minute, this chain could be made as infinitely long as you desire. But then we might be here all day. You could call it a chain reaction. Montebello Aluminium Tubing Aluminium is a gift that just keeps on giving and its versatility couldn't be better shown than when making product tubes. Montebello Packaging has designed a production line that takes a single coin-sized aluminium slug and turns it into a full tube, screw top and all. 
Lubricated slugs are fed into a forming press, and each slug is pressed at high velocity with about 200 tons of pressure to force the aluminum to create a tube. It can create 150 tubes per minute, which is why this is all happening so fast. The tubes are then aligned using compressed air and are trimmed between two synchronized rollers before being smoothed at the neck. This is how the neck remains sealed until the user pierces it. Product is inserted by a separate company, and the end is then sealed. Aluminium? More like aluminium. Atlantic Pacific Apple Peeling and Coring We can all agree that peeling and coring apples takes forever unless you're using an Atlas Pacific peeling machine. After being washed, the apples in this process are oriented top to bottom before being pincered into a peeling house. The pincers are thin to ensure more of the apple can be peeled as it rotates quickly while having two sharp razors run along the edge to peel the whole apple. The razor arms are adjustable to adjust to each individual apple in a sort of ballet of blades. A pressurized stencil arm then weakens the core of the apple as it's passed onto the coring section, which drops a pressurized mechanical pillar straight through the apple before it's pressed into a slicing chute. This can produce 130 peeled, cored, and sliced apples a minute. Now that's appealing. Which one of these did you find most satisfying? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.